So now let us start with the MCQs. So the first MCQ that we are going to do is a 30 year old male brought to the ER with a history of abdominal gunshot injury. There is an abdominal gunshot injury. On examination, the patient's general condition was poor, restless and disoriented. These are features which are suggestive of a shock. So now let us start with the MCQs. So the first MCQ that we are going to do is a 30 year old male brought to the ER with a history of abdominal gunshot injury. There is an abdominal gunshot injury. On examination, the patient's general condition was poor, restless and disoriented. These are features which are suggestive of a shock. Maybe let us see. The pulse was also 130. That means it's somewhere around grade 2 or 3 hypovolemic shock. The blood pressure, hypotension, grade 3 is evident. Breathing rate was 35. Yes, it's a grade 3 now. Per abdomen examination, the bullet entry was found on the left side of the abdomen. The left upper lumbar region, both are involved. Left side of the abdomen and left upper lumbar region, both are involved. Abdominal distension was present and the peritoneal breach was present on palpation. So, on the local wound exploration, this was also there. The generalized abdominal tenderness were with the guarding was present. All of the following are the compensatory mechanisms going on in the patient. First of all, we have to understand that this is a patient of grade 3 hypovolemic shock. This is a grade 3 hypovolemic shock. So, before we talk about the grade 3 hypovolemic shock, how do we decide that? So, grading of hypovolemic shock is again very, very, very important. And how do we see this? This is evident on the basis of percentage blood loss or on the basis of ML blood loss or on the basis of some clinical factors. If we talk about the percentage loss, less than 15, 15 to 30, 30 to 40 and more than 40. This is how we see the grading in the terms of percentage. In terms of ML loss, we have less than 750, 750 to 1500, more than 1500 to 2000 liters, uh, 2000 ml and more than 2000 ml. This is grade 4. Then when we talk about heart rate, it is less than 100. So grade 1 is more or less looking like a compensated normal patient. This is more than 100, this is more than 120 and this is more than 140. When we talk about the BP, if we see the BP was falling. So, systolic BP is normal for grade 1, normal for grade 2 and it falls from grade 3 onwards. Then if we talk about mean arterial pressure, this is normal but from grade 2 onwards it starts to fall. This is the difference actually that we see. Then if you see the respiratory rate of the patient, 12 to 20, 20 more than 20 up to 30 more than 30 up to 40 and persistently elevated breath count above 35 is significant. So here if you see the breath count was 35 but the other factors were matching the window of grade 3 hypovolemic shock. Along with that we see the mental status. All these features are described in this MCQ. If we see the mental status this is oriented, this is anxious, this is anxious. Then we have restless and then we have lethargic or comatose lethargic or comatose so if you see there are some features which are going in favor of four some features are going in favor of three now what is happening in this case now body will always starts with it start with its what compensatory action so the juxta glomerular apparatus the juxta glomerular apparatus will release renin renin in turn will result in release of angiotensin and angiotensin 1 will convert will be converted in the lungs by angiotensin 2 angiotensin 2 will stimulate the adrenal to increase the catecholamine increase to increase the catecholamines and if there is increase in catecholamines what is going to happen students there will be increase sodium absorption and do you know under the influence of aldosterone yeah, under the influence of aldosterone yeah, this is because of the aldosterone 
so there is increased sodium retention in exchange of potassium so k plus excretion and sodium retention point number 1 which has been asked in mcq this is clear one this is clear here the second very important thing that we all have to understand is there is prostaglandins also involved in this game so the prostaglandins they are going to result in efferent arteriole dilatation efferent arteriole dilatation and efferent arteriole efferent arteriole constriction constriction and this is how this is how they are maintaining so this is efferent arteriole constriction this is under the effect of aldosterone so just see the aldosterone and prostaglandins they are helping to maintain the gfr so this is actually maintaining gfr now if we go to the question let us see the important points which are asked here the juxta glomerular apparatus of the kidney produces ren renin this is absolutely true there is increased excretion of potassium absolutely true do you know the auto regulation the auto regulation of gfr fails if it fails when there is hypotension so under the effect of hypotension and that is cut off is basically at 80 mm hg that this is going to fail this is also true there is efferent arteriole dilatation and efferent arteriole constriction constriction so this point is absolutely wrong